Pre school is at University Hospital, still being treated. However, we're learning more about her condition. And a 4th of July celebration turned deadly after shots fired, six people killed. This noon, we're hearing from some witnesses after they were running for their lives. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. We start here at home, two people dead on the city's northeast side, and right now police don't know who's responsible. This late-breaking story just coming into our newsroom. Police say the two men were found on a parking lot next to a gas station on Perrin Central near the intersection with Perrin Vital. Garrett Berger is at the scene now where police are still trying to figure out what happened. So, Garrett, what do you know so far? Well, officers were dispatched out to this parking lot a little after 8.30 this morning after two bodies were found right over there at that green Buick, one inside, one next to it. Both have since been moved. Now, police think it happened overnight, but they weren't able to provide us much in the way of details. Police said both men appeared to be in their 50s and there were casings left at the scene. We have heard one or possibly both of the men may have been staying in the car. Now, an SAPD spokesman says it's still to be determined if they were robbed or if this is something else. The only thing they did know is that the men were shot. Right now, homicide detectives are working the scene diligently to uh, find any kind of evidence of what happened or what took place here. Um, we encourage any witnesses who heard anything last night around 3.30 in the morning to please uh, call the homicide office at 210-207-7635. That's department spokesman acknowledging that with the 4th of July fireworks going on overnight, people may not have noticed the shots that killed these two men. Now, right now, you can see that police are still or investigators are still around the car. Both bodies have been taken away. Now, you heard the department spokesman mention 3.30 specifically. Now, a uh, police sergeant I just spoke with said that they were able to zero in on that time because of surveillance video, but they are still looking for more video. Live in the Northeast side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Also do this noon, we are learning more about a child who was shot but survived that deadly attack at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. University Hospital reporting a 10-year-old girl is now in good condition. She's one of several victims hurt in that shooting back in May. 19 students, two teachers were killed. In the wake of that migrant tragedy here in San Antonio, border security is on the agenda during a press conference this afternoon. It's happening in Kinney County. According to a press relief, officials will be talking about plans to keep communities safe. Those in attendance include Uvalde, Kinney, and Goliad County judges, Uvalde and Brackettville mayors, along with other officials. You can live stream the comments on KSAT.com around 3 o'clock this afternoon. We are also sending a crew, so we will have the latest for you tonight on KSAT 12 News at 5 and 6. Now to the latest on that migrant tragedy back here in San Antonio. Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says has potentially identified all the people who were killed in a press release. The BCMEO says 35 of the victims have been conclusively identified. Their ages range from 13 to 55. Of these 35 victims, 20 were citizens of Mexico, 10 were citizens of Guatemala, and 5 were citizens of Honduras. And an update from the McGregor Police Department at Texas Department of Public Safety. They have discontinued their Amber Alert for two missing teenagers. 14-year-old Emily Solomon and Aisha Cross have been found. DPS located the teens in Georgetown. They have been safely returned to their families. And one man, James Robert Von Houten, has been charged with harboring a runaway. And it appears that someone's idea of a 4th of July celebration has led to 5th of July heartache for two families. They've lost their homes due to a big fire that may have been started by fireworks. This happened on San Antonio's far northwest side in a neighborhood near Bandera Road in Loop 1604. Katrina Weber tells us why firefighters say the holiday kept them hopping. San Antonio firefighters had no choice but to bring out their big guns. Big flames were already consuming two homes in the 9300 block of Wildstone Place when they arrived around 1130 last night. We had concerns of potentially four houses. We were able to uh, stop the fire at the two houses. Fire Chief Charles Hood says with the homes being so close together, the fire quickly spread. The narrow street crowded with cars made fighting it tough. Crews had trouble getting their equipment into place. This is under investigation at this time, but we do have ring doorbells from some of the residents with fireworks going off in the street prior to the call coming in. Someone's idea of celebrating may have ruined the day for the people who lived here. 
They all got out safely, but lost most of what they own. Based on the damage, it's clear that no one can live in either one of these houses. But based on the danger, firefighters put up these signs to make sure everyone stays out. This double dose of firefighting capped off an Independence Day that was no holiday for fire crews. A lot of grass fires, large brush fires. Again, a lot of these are caused by fireworks. Going forward, firefighters would like to throw water on that idea to convince people not to fire up any more fireworks. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Firefighters busy with another house fire overnight that left one family without a home. The fire happened not far from Pleasanton Road and South Flores Street on the city's south side. Firefighters responded to the 3 a.m. call and arrived with the flames at that home. The San Antonio Fire Department says the house was completely destroyed. Four people inside the home, but they got out safely. No one hurt. SAFD is still investigating what caused that fire. Three people are recovering after they were shot inside an apartment on the city's west side early this morning. It happened in the 7700 block of Ingram Road near Calabria and Loop 410. According to police, one woman was shot twice in the back. Another woman shot multiple times in the arm and chest. Both women taken to University Hospital in critical condition. San Antonio police say a third person was shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital by someone in a silver sedan. Their condition is unknown. No arrests have been made so far. And now to that mass shooting taking place yesterday. A 4th of July celebration turning into carnage in Highland Park, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Authorities say it started when a gunman opened fire from a rooftop. Bullets raining down on participants and spectators in the town's July 4th parade, killing six people and injuring more than 30. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more from Highland Park. A holiday of horror. Dozens since scrambling as a gunman unleashed a barrage of bullets during the July 4th parade in Highland Park, Illinois. Families racing for cover, grabbing their children, desperately searching for safety. When dad frantically trying to enter a nearby building. I tried to break the glass to get in with my son and I couldn't break it. And when uh, the shot stopped again, that's when we started, we decided we had to run. So we started shooting again. And we ran behind the building and I put my, my son in a dumpster. Abby Brochio was holding her one-year-old daughter when she was grazed by a bullet. I hit the ground with my daughter and I remember looking around trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. And I, in fact, looked up um, at the neighboring business across the street and saw the shooter on the roof. Six people now confirmed dead and at least 35 hospitalized. The ages of the victims ranging from as young as 8 to 85. Police are now questioning this man, Robert E. Cremo III, as a person of interest, taken into custody following a day-long manhunt. Cremo spotted by authorities driving in a 2010 silver Honda that they have been looking for. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened, and the investigation will continue. Charges have not been approved yet at this time. Monday shooting in Highland Park, just one of a series of gun violence incidents as Americans celebrated Independence Day. Philadelphia, New York City, and Kenosha Wisconsin, all suffering multiple shootings. And investigators are combing through Cremo's digital and social media footprint as they work to confirm that he was the one responsible for this massacre. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Highland Park, Illinois. We're back up around 100 degrees today. Could get even hotter by the weekend as high pressure grows and strengthens. We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. Also coming up this half hour, the Spurs did a lot of young guys off to Vegas this week. Ready to see how fast they can grow up in the NBA. More on that in sports. And self-care is a concept a lot of folks got familiar with during quarantine. But it doesn't just mean taking a long bath or getting a massage. It can also mean picking up a new hobby. How a program at a local library is helping folks who are feeling a little crafty. Throughout our segment, New You, we have been able to show you plenty of ways to get moving or get outdoors, but there are a lot of other ways to become a New You, like picking up a new hobby or simply getting out of your comfort zone and meeting people with similar interests. In today's New You, producer Alyssa Medina introduces us to a unique group where you can do just that. Being here, especially after COVID, it's really nice to have that social interaction, be able to talk to people in a group again. During quarantine, many people might have picked up a new hobby or two, 
like Miranda Reyes. I'm still kind of a beginner myself. I'm not an expert. She's the program director of the San Antonio Public Library's Petrenko location, which is actually inside the YMCA, a place full of activities for the kiddos. I was like, well, I want to do something fun for the adults, get the adults out, because, you know, mom needs a break, dad needs a break. So she set out to build a crochet group where adults can listen and learn. If somebody's just starting out and they have questions, generally it can't be answered by just looking at pictures online. It's nice to have somebody who's sitting right next to you who can show you this is how you do a double stitch or a half double stitch or this is what this means in this pattern. Kimberly Coffey has been coming to Dreaded Threads for a few months now. Some people bring personal projects like me. I have my dinosaur that I'm working on right now but there is print-offs for people who are just learning to crochet or knit or cross-stitch. She's not only invested in the project she takes on every Monday, but also the podcast they listen to in class. Before I came to this group, I used to listen to podcasts while I would crochet, and so it's nice to have somebody to talk to while listening. Turning what is normally a solo pastime into a social one. I didn't think so many people listened to True Crime podcasts until they heard about it. I was like, yes, somebody else listens to it and it's not just me. I'm, and I was like, oh, okay, this is a thing. I knew that this story needed to be told because it's a case that I know could totally be solved if the right things fall into place. And you can like throw your theories out there as like, oh, well, why did they do this? Or why did they do that? Or I think it was the husband. Reyes says immersing yourself in a craft and focusing on a true crime story is the perfect weekday escape. You kind of get in the zone and it's really calming. And I think when you've had like a long day at work, you just want to come relax, but still be around people and not have this expectation that you have to do something. Like you can focus on your own thing, relax, and just enjoy everything everybody's company. For New You, Alyssa Medina, KSAT 12 News. Dreaded Thread, open to anyone over the age of 18. The group gets together every Monday from 5.30 to 7. Enough time to listen to two podcasts, so you can do this. And don't worry about bringing supplies because the library has all of the material you're going to need to get started. And this might be a great time to be staying indoors and doing some arts and some crafts because I, I, I got a sneak peek from Mike this morning. Yeah. I didn't see anything but triple digits on that board. I mean, I kid you not, Mike and I were sitting there just, try, as I said earlier at 9 a.m., trying to find something, some relief somewhere in the forecast, and there's not much. I'm just going to warn you now. The aquifer is still falling, down nearly a foot today to 636 even. Not a good situation at all. And the pollen count molds are falling, thankfully. They're in the moderate category at 620 today, down from a high over the weekend. Uh, we'll talk about how hot it may get, especially as we head towards the weekend coming up. So I guess the only thing you can really do is if people are going to go outside, warn them that they need to make sure they're drinking water, stay hydrated, take those light clothes, wear a hat, make sure you got your sunscreen, take an umbrella if you want to deflect the sun because <laughs> it is, you know, but this, I guess, you know, we're getting used to it. Yeah. Seems like we have it every day, so you might as well go out and enjoy it. It's true. You, can. I, you know, I think you covered all the bases there. And Thank we, you. We've got another <laughs> couple months to go. I mean, this is this is still pretty early in the in the summer season, and uh, we are we are pretty much resigned to the fact, right, that this heat is sticking around for a while longer. We're looking for any glimmers of hope in the forecast. And, you know, maybe maybe next week, but in the meantime, it is all heat all the way. We've got partly cloudy skies right now. And uh, 89 degrees at the airport, so we're almost there to 90. Dew point, though, is, is hanging up there at 70, so that makes it feel like 94, and that's an important number. When the humidity doesn't uh, mix out like this, you're going to get those uh, pretty intense heat indices, and I think we're going to be dealing with that for next several hours here. The satellite picture shows, yeah, the clouds, those morning clouds pretty much scattered out. We're still going to be left with some mostly sunny skies this afternoon. And temperatures have made their way. Uh, into the uh, 80s and 90s at this point. 90 at Port SA, 91 Randolph, 92 already in New Braunfels, 84 at Bernie Stage, 90 Comfort and Bandera. And you're at 87 out in Uvalde. Heat index, when you factor in the humidity, feels like it's 101 in Pleasanton, 
Feels like it's 99 in New Braunfels, 96 at Randolph, and you know these numbers are only going to go up. It's only noon time. So yes, it's one of those days where we do need to be careful. We can't let our guard down here. I know we're, we're used to it, but don't, don't forget uh, with heat and sea is as high as 103, 104. It can be very difficult to be outside for any length of time. And in fact, I, I think the heat index stays up above 100 even through maybe the six o'clock hour. And it's not just us. We are, yes, very hot here in Texas. But look at the temperature in St. Louis, 97 right now. It's 90 in Chicago, so they're actually a degree warmer than us. High pressure sitting right over top of the, uh, the states here, Missouri and Kansas, and temperatures are going to really spike in these areas today, too. So there's heat advisories in place for those folks. And uh, even though we're not under a heat advisor, we still need to take caution as well. There's the ridge of high pressure. Everything's going up and around it. So there's severe weather up in the Dakotas today. Some storms in the Gulf of Mexico, but nothing, nothing here over Texas. And in fact, this ridge of high pressure, it strengthens, it grows, it builds on itself. By the time we get into the weekend, strong enough to really push our temperatures up a few more degrees. I think air temperatures this weekend could be as high as 103, 104. So just get ready. Uh, one place we do look for some relief is the tropics. And uh, we look at the typical development zones this time of year, at least for the month of July. We look at the Lesser Antilles over towards the Bahamas and then, of course, the Gulf of Mexico. But as of right now, not a lot going on. I will tell you the water temperatures are plenty warm. So if anything does get going, there's plenty of fuel there. But we don't see anything that is of imminent concern in the tropics, at least not in the Atlantic. You go over to the Pacific, we do have Bonnie. Remember, she started in the Atlantic, but now in the Pacific, a Cat 3 storm. Winds are at 115 miles per hour. This goes out over open ocean and begins to fall apart as we head into the weekend. It won't affect any land. Extended forecast. Uh, just, uh, just so many numbers. Uh, 100 Wednesday, 101 Thursday. And I mentioned we get hotter by the weekend. 103 Saturday, 103 on Sunday. A lot of sun. Maybe, maybe next week. The pattern changes a little bit, but in the meantime... We're going to have to buckle in and get ready for this, uh, this heat. That's all right. We can hang in there. Yeah. We've done it before. We're tough. That's right. We're South Texans. The Young Spurs practicing today before they get a little taste of the NBA later on this week. And history in Major League Baseball last night. We'll tell you how that happened. Coming up. San Antonio Spurs are just days away from tipping off play in the Las Vegas Summer League. And Spurs fans will be watching the 19-year-olds to see what they can do in an NBA-type environment. We're talking about the three draft picks and also Joshua Primo, who's entering his second season with the Spurs after an impressive rookie campaign. At first glance, his stats may not look all that impressive, but he did start 16 games, nearly averaged double-digit points, four rebounds, three assists per game over the final two months of the season. So what did he learn from that experience? That's the big question. We'll find out as they get ready for the Summer League. The Spurs will open Summer League play against the Cavs this Friday at 4 o'clock. WNBA star Brittany Griner has reached out to President Joe Biden, begging him to get her out of Russia. She sent him a handwritten letter asking for her and other detainees' freedom. Griner has been detained in Russia for 130 days, awaiting trial on charges that she tried to smuggle vape cartridges with cannabis oil into that country. And history in Major League Baseball last night. Twins and White Sox, bottom of the seventh Sox with two on. A.J. Pollock deep fly to center. Brian Buxton makes a great catch. Both runners took off, and now they are in trouble because neither one could make it back. So there's a tag for out two and then a touch for out three. And that's the first 8-5 triple play in Major League history. Never been done before. Incredible. The White Sox went on to win that game in extras, 6-3. Hey, coming up next half hour this weekend, travelers not only had to deal with busy airports, but also canceled and delayed flights. A look at your rights as a passenger if this ever happens to you. That's coming up in the next half hour. And a California wildfire spreading to nearly 1,000 acres over the course of just a few hours. What's the, what is fanning those flames after the break? And getting an infant to fall asleep. That can be tough at times, and that's where different sleep products come in. For years, incline sleepers and rockers have been marketed and sold as safe sleeping options, despite warnings they put babies at risk of suffocation. But now that's supposed to change. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shares what's being done to keep your baby safe.
Now to the latest on that fatal police shooting of a 25-year-old black man in Akron, Ohio, who was unarmed and running away when he was killed after a traffic stop. A curfew in that city helping keep the peace after dozens were arrested during protest. Demonstrators expressing outrage after the release of police body cam footage. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Another day of protests on the streets of Akron, Ohio, with people demanding police reform after the fatal police shooting of 25-year-old Jalen Walker. A curfew put in place Monday night to help keep the peace after about 50 people were arrested over the weekend following largely peaceful protests. We got to be peaceful because he's a peaceful. Listen to me when I tell you this. He's a peaceful person. A great kid. All he do is smile, man. Police body camera footage shows Walker's final moments last week. Police say it all started when Walker drove away from them during an attempted traffic stop. As he sped off, authorities say a gunshot was fired from the car. Walker eventually jumping out, running away on foot while wearing a ski mask. Authorities say Walker then stopped and turned towards them, prompting them to fire dozens of shots. A preliminary medical examiner's report shows Walker's body had at least 60 wounds. He was unarmed when he was shot and killed. Police say they later found a handgun and loaded magazine in his car. My client was killed while unarmed, and he was shot more than 60 times anyway, and more than 90 bullets were used to take him down. That's extraordinarily disturbing. The police officers union saying they believe the independent investigation will justify the officers actions, including the number of shots fired. They need to be able to articulate what specific threats they were facing. And that goes for every round that goes down the barrel of their gun. The Ohio Bureau of Investigation is now reviewing the shooting. Eight officers are on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of that investigation. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. This noon, police in Philadelphia are still looking for the suspect who fired shots during a 4th of July celebration, hitting two officers. The shooting happened just as the fireworks were getting underway last night. One officer was hit in the shoulder. A bullet grazed the head of another officer. They were both released from the hospital this morning. Police say they aren't sure if the shooting was intentional or if the officers were hit by stray bullets from a celebratory gunfire. Pope Francis sent his condolences to all affected by yesterday's shooting in Highland Park. In a letter sent to the Archbishop of Chicago, the Pope expressed that he was deeply saddened to learn of the senseless shooting and that he joined the entire community in praying for the victims and hoped that the injured and bereaved would receive healing and consolation. Francis also added that he is praying for that every member of society will reject violence in all forms and respect life all its stages. Outside with live cam, got some clouds, but I'm not sure that's going to help with the heat any at all. It just looks pretty nice out there. Yeah, at least there is some some shade. Uh, the clouds helped a little bit this morning, but temperatures are now really uh, jumping up 91. Uh, I want to show you the aquifer once again. If you missed it earlier, it's worth showing because we're down nearly a foot at uh, 636 today. And the way things are looking, this number is going to drop even more. We are still in stage two restrictions for SAWS customers, if you're curious, which is once a week watering on your day. Uh, rainfall this year, we'll check in on that. It's not great. 5.11 for the year. We are now over 11 and a half inches below average. Del Rio, about six and a half inches below average. Austin also looking at a deficit. Rainfall has been hard to come by, and there is not any in the forecast today. Temperatures, 89 degrees at the airport officially. 91 Hondo, 93 Pleasant, and 95 down there in Katua. Over 100 there for sure today. And I do think we'll see quite a few triple digits on the map this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. Here's how our KSAT 12-hour forecast plays out. 100 at 4 o'clock. We will get a good southeasterly breeze, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, 96 at 7 p.m and still in the 90s and 9 o'clock before falling into the 80s a little bit later tonight. Another look at the extended forecast, which includes even more heat coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. Speaking of dry, a fire in Northern California is still burning and threatens to take down 100 structures. The so-called Electra fire broke out yesterday in dry grassy area near Sacramento, and that dryness is fueling the flames. The fire grew 
to well over 900 acres in just a few hours. People who live in that area were forced to evacuate. Quite the opposite here. Communities in Australia still underwater, affecting thousands of people. This happening in Sydney. About 50,000 people have received evacuation orders and warnings to abandon their homes. Crews had to rescue 100 people overnight after they got trapped in cars on flooded roads. The flood emergency comes after days of heavy rain, which caused dims, dams and waterways to overflow. And after more than four months of intense fighting, Russia claimed full control over one of the two provinces in Ukraine's eastern industrial heartland. However, there are signs Russian forces are dealing heavy losses. The question now is whether Russia has the military strength to complete its capture of the Donbass region and make gains elsewhere in Ukraine. Meanwhile, we're getting an idea of just how much destruction the war is causing in Ukraine. Infrastructure losses are now estimated at more than $100 billion. The Greek Orthodox Church, destroyed in the September 11th terror attacks more than two decades ago, has reopened. More than 1,500 people attended the consecration ceremony Monday at St. Nichols Church, Greek Orthodox Church in Lower Manhattan. The church leader said they picked July 4th for the consecration, so the shrine will be tied to the birth of America forever. The ceremony included the sealing of St. Nicholas relics in the altar table. The bishop anointed the walls, doors, icons of the church. It will be open to the public later this summer. Regular prayer services will take place starting in the fall. And today, President Biden will be awarding the Medal of Honor to four Vietnam veterans, all served in the Army. Staff Sergeant Edward Kenshiro will receive his medal posthumously. He saved his fellow soldiers for enabling his platoon to withdraw from a village while under attack. He died the following year in a battle as a result of a gunshot wound. Specialist 5 Dwight W. Birdwell was wounded in a separate battle while serving his while saving his tank commander's life, continuing to fight and refusing evacuation until ordered to tend to his wounds. Specialist 5 Dennis M. Fujii will receive his medal for serving aboard a helicopter ambulance during an evacuation mission. He continued fighting for 17 hours while wounded, and retired Major John Duffy was wounded twice while battling enemy forces for two days in 1972, refusing evacuation and continuing to fight. A man discovers an interesting water feature built into his home and decided it was the perfect place for some new pets. Details coming up. And chaos over the holiday weekend. Thousands of flights canceled or delayed. It could keep happening, so it's important to know your rights. We've got more after the break. U.S. flight cancellations are slowing down a little as the 4th of July holiday comes to a close. That's bringing slight relief to travelers trying to get home after the long weekend. But keep in mind, a lot of travelers are still facing long delays and flight cancellations. Experts say flights are getting crowded as demand of traveling surges faster than anyone expected. And the TSA says it has screened more than 2 million people a day for 30 days in a row. We could see those cancellations and delays happen throughout the summer, leaving travelers wondering what they can do. ABC's Gio Benitez has a look at your rights as a passenger. It's been one of the busiest travel periods the TSA has seen in years, screening a record number of travelers this holiday weekend, with airlines delaying or canceling thousands of flights. I spent $656 on a ticket. And now I'm still trying to find a way to get home. And experts say the staffing issues won't be fixed until at least next year. So what are your rights? Under federal law, if your flight is canceled, airlines are required to give you a cash refund if you decide not to travel. You may have to call the airline and demand to get that cash refund rather than the voucher. Scott Kyes of Scott's uh, Cheap Flight says if you're trying to get a refund online and want that cash back, not a voucher, be careful what you click airline might send you an email saying, you know, we're sorry, your flight has been canceled. 
If you'd no longer like to travel, click here. We've already processed your travel voucher. You do not have to click there and accept that travel voucher. The Department of Transportation also says consumers are entitled to a refund if an airline made a significant schedule change or significantly delays a flight. But if those delays or schedule changes caused you to miss your hotel check-in or rental car pickup, airlines do not need to pick up your tab for those bills. The travel mom, Emily Kaufman, says that's where travel insurance comes in. During these challenging times, you might choose the travel insurance because it covers things like trip delays or cancellations, trip interruption, lost or stolen luggage. So it really does have a great payoff. And no matter what, major airlines, they're not charging change fees. So if you need to change your flight for any reason at any time, you can. But just remember that if your new flight is more expensive, you're going to have to pay the difference. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Outside with lack of, you know, some people, you get on the plane and, and the flight attendants will ask you to, to make sure the, the window shades are down because oh, yeah. it's so high. You know, that's going all going on all around San Antonio's airport today. For sure. You turn the air on, put the window <laughs> shades yeah. down, try to keep the plane cool. Yeah, the way these temperatures are going, we're at 89 already. 78 was the low this morning, so we're above average there. We'll be above average this afternoon. The record is 104. That was set back in 2009. Not in jeopardy, but we'll be in range of it this afternoon and a lot more heat as we head towards the weekend. That's seven day forecast. It's coming up. Welcome to whatever the weather. Um, I'm meteorologist Sarah. <laughs> you want to start again? Because you were touching <laughs> yeah, the table. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> three, three, two, one. Meteorologist Katie Blake's last podcast with us. So I thought for our last episode together, we could do a little QA. I'll be the Q, you be the A. <laughs> okay. Uh, nowhere's ever felt quite like San Antonio. It's such a unique place. I'm going to miss that food in San Antonio. You like the cheese buzz? The, ch the cheese buzz, I do. Cheese buzz. Little Marg. Little Marg action. Maybe this is where I'll get a little bit sappy. Because we've been working together for five years, and I said I would, I'm already crying. You better stop. I will always be so, so, so thankful to our audience here and our viewers for helping helping me through that time. I don't think they realized how challenging it was. Can't wait till tomorrow to see the full episode. We're going to miss Katie Blake. Man. When she yeah. goes off. But we wish her the best. We do. We're yeah. so sad. We're so yeah. sad, but we're happy for her. Yep. Yeah. Best of luck to you, Katie. We're going to see you around, I'm sure. We'll see you around. Um, let's talk climatology here. Uh, average last 100 degree day here in San Antonio, August 27th. That's the day we're kind of all looking forward to. Like, when can we get rid of this heat, right? Uh, typically, it's late August. Uh, that's when we, that's, that's our average, not uh, set in stone there, but that's just how it averages out. If you're curious, our average first 100 degree day is June 25th. Well, we, uh, we had 100 degree days well before that this year. So we're kind of not sticking to the plan here. Uh, so far, since May 1st, we've had 54 days above 95 degrees. And we've had 26 days at 100 degrees or above, and we're on pace to set the record for number of 100 degree days. We show you all these numbers to tell you what you already know. It's been hot and uh, looks to stay that way. We go outside for you right now. We've got partly cloudy skies, 89 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 70. Feels like 94 when you factor in that thick humidity and calm winds at this hour. 86 degrees, Bernie stage feels like 89. Feels like 99 already in New Braunfels. Stenson feels like 98. Seguin, you uh, have a feels like number of 95. Same story in Kerrville. Uh, the forecast high temperature, the air temperature 100 here in San Antonio today. A lot of triple digits on the map. Just like yesterday, it'll, it'll look very similar. And we'll see those mostly sunny skies. who will also be a little bit breezy. Gust uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour with southeasterly breeze. And that's what ush is ushering in uh, some of that moisture. Uh, we'll check in on temperatures again. You know, last uh, last half hour we showed you that St. Louis was at 95. They are now at 97. That is pretty impressive for uh, St. Louis. Chicago is at 90. There is going to be some big time dangerous heat here across the uh, Midwest today as uh, heat high builds over top of them. And it's the same high that really is control of our weather too. It's just that it's centered kind of right over Missouri today. So heat advisories in place there. 
and uh, there's going to be heat issues anywhere from Wichita to Omaha and Milwaukee down towards uh, parts of Mississippi and Alabama. There's that ridge five pressure and around the edges of it. We've got some showers and storms, some storms up in the Dakotas today, but this ridge builds, builds. It gets stronger by the middle part of the week and by the end of the week for sure. And then by the weekend, even stronger. And so that means temperatures are going to be really hot, including here in Texas. Uh, we're expecting a high. This is just an example, but on Saturday, a high around 103 here in San Antonio. Could go as high as 104 in Dallas, places like Phoenix, Las Vegas. Yeah, they're used to the heat there, but it will be awful hot, 113 and 108 respectively. So uh, the heat sticks around probably into early next week. Now there are some indications as we get into the middle part of next week that maybe that high breaks down a little bit, opens the door, gives us some rain chances. Let's hope, let's hope. Otherwise, uh, it is status quo here. 100 next couple days, 101 Thursday, 102 Friday, 103 Saturday and Sunday. And unfortunately, those numbers may be a little conservative. Uh, heat and some humidity too sticks around again even into next week. Those overnight lows are right around 80. There's very little relief here for any of us, but we can do this. As we said earlier, we'll get through it. We'll get to the uh, we'll get to the fall. We'll get some rain back in here eventually. David, tough South Texans. We can take this on. We can uh, this, we can do it. Got to be smart about it. Yep. All right, homeowners man cave is looking more like an evil lair after he added eels. The unique feature at his home that made it possible. Ooh. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio has been called Military City USA for its different career training at Joint Base San Antonio Lagland. And here at the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence is where the United States Air Force flight attendants learn the fundamentals of serving the president on Air Force One. We are training future flight attendants who will be going off to fly with our nation's top leaders to include the Vice President, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, flying anywhere and everywhere. Um, obviously our main job is safety on the aircraft. The air crew are required to learn all aircraft emergency procedures plus proper etiquette while flying around the world with our top leaders. It is imperative that we are teaching them to pay attention to details. Um, something so small could set a mission back. Uh, we don't want our, our users to be late to meetings, so we harp on manners, etiquette, and protocol, teaching them to be professional since they will be uh, in front of some of our nation's most important leaders. Hey, forget the traditional goldfish pond. A Kentucky man has turned an eel pit into his man cave. Taking care of these squirmy pets is a pastime that would make some people pass out. But as CNN's Jeannie Most reports, the eels are reeling in fans. Hi, everybody. When Nick Tobler goes down the hatch, he's heading for his eel pit. He's got a feel for eels. If I were to like try to pick her up, which I kind of do here, um, she would dart off. And you think eels are cute? Oh, I think they're adorable. I think I think weird things are cute. I don't know. I like weird stuff. Nick is a manager at a Kentucky pet shop and was delighted when he discovered his house had an underground receptacle to collect rainwater underneath the garage. My house came with a cave. And what better to stock it with? We have eels. Than mail order eels. Online fans follow every wriggle and squirm as he dangles worms. You can see right when he sees me there, he starts getting excited for this worm. I had him eating out of my hand within three, four days. The internet ate it up, especially when it came to naming the eels. From the biggest, Crunchwrap Supreme, named after a Taco Bell favorite, to the smallest. Here's a little bathtub. Often names included the eel from Shaquille, to this is tequila tequila and the supremely popular mentally eel that's a fan, fan favorite a mentally eel has single-handedly cured my depression is what most of my comments are saying about it nick's own online nickname is cow turtle he set up a director's chair overlooking the eel pit and is thinking of adding a hammock. This is about as good a man cave gets. And within Nick's man cave, the eels have their own man caves to retreat to as they worm their way into. Ooh, I don't know what happened to the end of that, but okay. <laughs> 
I, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I was I wondering if he was married. <laughs> I <got nothing. laughs> that heel guy. How many how many dates is he gonna get after seeing this this story? So yeah. Would you date him, Fiona? Well, you're married. That's your excuse. Exactly. Hi, Dave. Great show today. Does not include eels, by the way. But after the Fourth of July weekend, you might have some leftovers. Yes, Noenia Lewis from Gnome's Catering is here. And a popular item, of course, at Fourth of July parties is a watermelon. But it's always tough to get through the whole thing, right? Yes. So instead of throwing it away, you can make it into a salad with some feta and some balsamic sauce. It tastes Great. I yeah. love that. That is one of the most delicious things that you can eat. Okay, need something to wash all this great food down with. And Jen is out at Charity Bar. Hey, Jen. Yes, cool off with refreshing cocktails here at the Charity Bar, but you're also giving back while enjoying these delicious drinks. We're going to get a taste of the cocktails, but also a taste of the menu. Look at that ramen. Oh, I hope you're hungry. You will be after this. Oh, we oh, are yes. hungry. Yes, indeed. Okay. Look at those fresh baked goods. Breads mm -hmm. and conchas. We've all seen conchas before and Julie Contreras from uh, Concha Style is here and these all have something in common? Yes, all of our breads are sourdough, organic, and dairy. So you can make conchas out of sourdough? Yeah, you can make any product you want that has yeast in it into sourdough. Interesting. We're going to give them a taste. Yes, and you know, it's summer, it's vacation time, so we want to know where would you go if you could go anywhere, but it has to start with the first initial of your name. Let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. What starts with F? <laughs> I'm thinking the M's. Oh, lots of great places. <laughs> Right now on KSET.com, a look at a new interactive studio at the McNay Art Museum. San Antonio-based artists collaborated with the museum staff to create artistic elements that make up the imaginative learning space. The studio design's goal is to reflect the colorful gardens that run through the McNay's 25-acre landscape. You can learn more about it right there on our website. Just go to KSAT.com. It's 92 right now. Stop me if you've heard this story before. Stop. It's, there you go. I got nothing left. <laughs> I got to just look at that right there. Uh, that's all you got to do is look at it. Uh, you get the idea. Hot, hot, more hot. All right, this show's always hot. SA Live, they got bread, they got food, they got fun, they got all kinds of entertaining things. Take your mind off the heat and, and enjoy it. SA Live starts right now. <laughs> you had a question look on your face, David. Today on SA Live, it's cheers to a good cause. We sip the latest drinks and eats at Charity Bar and find out what charity is supporting today. And spoil the kids this summer by taking them to a spa meant just for them. And fresh baked conchas, a little bit different. They're made out of organic and dairy-free sourdough. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Ooh, yes. we have lunch. Uh-huh. Yay. Bring that in for a landing right here. Ooh. Yes, hello and happy tasty Tuesday. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorostiza. All right, well, our first guest is a Southern Belle with a passion for cooking everyone's favorite dishes from scratch. And today she's showing us what to do with some of those leftovers from the long mm -hmm. holiday weekend. We all had some really good food to eat. Now, Menia Lewis, owner of Gnomes Catering and Event Planning, is here. Good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank yes. you. How are you doing today? Doing oh. fantastic. Well, with all this beautiful food laid out here. <laughs> right? So great. And this is great because there can be so much leftover food from your 4th of July grill out, right? Yes. So my partner, TJ, grills, and he always grills way too much. So I decided to just go ahead and flip those leftovers because that old chicken gets tiring. Yeah, because somebody just wants to do, eat the same old chicken and, and to give it a little, uh, like you said, kind of new life, if you will. Yeah. So, okay, so what are we making today? Today we are making a steak, not steak, a chicken um, quesadilla today. Okay. Um, it's going to be with cheese. I think it's one of the easiest things you can shred the meat up and you can put it inside. But you can all, it don't have to be chicken. It can be pork. It can be vegetables. It can be anything. Quesadillas are like a fun, comfort thing. And yeah, it's, it's like basic, well, it's basically a grilled cheese, if you will. And it's sort of a catch-all, too, if mm -hmm. you will. 
almost anything you can find in the fridge, you can probably yep. put in there if you yeah, want to, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And this is so good. I'm yep. going to put a little more on there. It's all right, all right. There we go. And, and it's not me, but it's Fiona that's been sampling all of the... It's uh, been so I good. Know. This was full. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't full. <laughs> but I have had some. It is amazing. Just okay. about. So okay. um, the other thing that you were talking about with leftovers, too, is you can always freeze them. You can divvy them up into, into mm. plastic bags, freeze them, Yes, right? you can freeze them and save them for later. Like the chicken, you can make a chicken noodle soup or, you know, like moms who are tired, they can pull that chicken out and they remix it something else or you know put a sauce over it it's so much things you can do with leftovers okay, okay. and the one thing and we were talking about this uh, in the the teas what to do with watermelon because it is always so delicious but adding mm -hmm. what you've done to this is just oh takes it over the top well you know everybody has leftover watermelon that we throw away so, but you don't know, you don't have to throw it away. You can use it for a salad. You can make it for, um, mm -hmm. you can add a sauce, a dressing to a salad. You can put lettuce over it. You can just make it plain with just feta and a balsamic on top of it, just like that. You can even do another vinaigrette, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, and, and these flavors combine together. And you said even if you wanted to add, throw some mint in there or something yeah, like you that. You can throw mint, mm -hmm. you can even put meat in there. You can throw anything with that and it'll still be good. And you can make drinks with that too. Ooh. I like that idea. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. All right. And what have you done with the chicken here? The chicken, that was the old dry chicken that we didn't want. So I pulled the chicken off the bone. I chopped it up. And after I chopped it up, I did a mayonnaise. I did um, apples. I did a celery and an onion and then some mayonnaise. I put in a croissant and it's so good. And, and that's the other nice thing with chicken salad too. You don't necessarily have to pull out the cookbook and follow a recipe. Again, it, there's a million different ways there's of doing it, so right? so many different ways. I love HEBs with the grapes. That's so delicious. Mm -hmm. And especially when you use barbecue chicken. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's yes. really good chicken salad. Yes. Okay, now this right here, what was the inspiration behind it? This right here, I used to go to Hot Joy and I used to get their beef and broccoli. And it's a smoked beef with broccoli. So I just took our steak and I just chopped it up and I made a sauce because I forgot to pick one up. But you can do either or. And it's with beef and broccoli. Oop. I did something there. Okay. I turned it off, I think. So, okay, oh, we're now we're taste. cutting into yeah, our little the, quesadilla. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With the leftovers from the 4th of July holiday. So you do a lot of catering as well. So how can folks get a hold of you? And I mean, do you cater for like two or 200? Uh, I cater small groups. I cater big groups. I cater events, corporate events. Um, you can get a hold of me. You can email me at gnomecateringsa at yahoo.com or also you can um, you can call me at 210-570-2035 and also you can eat, you can also hit me up on my website. I'm available. All right. And you have a brunch that you do, right? I'm going to have a karaoke brunch mm -hmm. at Upstage uh, Upstage Comedy Club off of Walsam on Sunday and it starts at 1 and it's going to be so delicious. It's good food. Okay. I've made quesadillas before with just regular kind of, you know, roasted chicken. <laughs> but no, with the barbecue leftover. Yes. That adds a whole new ball game to it. As my partner TJ loves to say, you gotta put some smoke on the food to make it great. Yes! <laughs> okay. Yes. And you help out uh, local businesses too, right? Yes, I'm part of the African American mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce. I sit on the chairman as the um, the membership committee, and we help businesses attain resources that they normally couldn't get on their own. Like what? Mm -hmm. Like oh. normally we keep them informed with like Lift Fund, we keep them informed with like banks, local banks like Chase and Frost and let them know that they want to reach out to small businesses but they don't know how. Okay, so you're you're sort of the, the coach, if you will, for a lot of the small businesses. Oh, we're the coach. It's a, we're a family. It takes yeah. a team. It's a team behind us. Everybody help each other, right? Yes. Okay. And that's yes. the cool thing about small businesses. They're not in competition with each other. Even if there's another small caterer around there, you all work together, and that, that just makes it kind of snowball, we, right? We get farther together as a collaborative. You know, it's hard to do things on your own because sometimes you don't know some things and the other one don't, and we put the pieces together, and it works out so great. Okay. Now, do you have a favorite Fourth of July food? Do I have a favorite Fourth of July food? Um, <laughs> potato salad. <laughs> What's your secret? Yeah. What's my secret? I just keep it simple: salt and pepper, potatoes and eggs, and that's it. Nothing oh, else. I like eggs and potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The hard-boiled eggs chopped up really yes. good. Okay. Super simple. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. For more information on Gnomes Catering and event planning, all you got to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, where we've provided a link or just scan that QR code on your screen. Oh, that looks delicious. Okay, a lot of folks are maybe doing staycations, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to go on vacation, where would it be? However, one little catch. It has to be a place that starts with the first letter of your first name. Where would you go? <laughs> Fiji. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> yes, I've never been. Always our, wanted to go. Our director had said for me it'd be Michigan, but I mean, yes. it's just great in the fall. How, no, I'd be Maui. Where Ma would you go? Maui. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or um, 
Maybe the Maldives. I knew you were going to pick more than one. Okay, so <laughs> let us let us know. You can or only Mykonos. vacation yeah, to a place that begins Greece. with the first initial of your name. Let us know where you would go at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer a little later in the show. I do need to get back to Mackinac Island. Oh, though, my gosh, here we point. go. So, okay. Hey, we are washing down these delicious things we're dining on today with some yummy drinks, all for a good cause. Yes, our Jen Tobias Strusky is out at Charity Bar to taste their cocktails, food, and find out about what causes they are supporting. Hey there, Jen. Yes, that's right. It goes hand in hand here at the charity bar. You get a great cocktail, you give back to a charity, and they've been here since 2017, so they're all about giving back, but the cocktails are amazing. And here to help us today is bartender Brandon Torres. Brandon, I thought about it. B, you can go to Bora Bora, right? I totally could. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good trip. All right, so what are we making today, Brandon? All right, so the first cocktail we're going to make is this Paloma right here. It's one of our best sellers. Very uh, uh, nice tequila forward cocktail. Very bubbly because of the Topo Chico that we put on top of it. Nice. And it has a lot of grapefruit, so it's very tart and refreshing. Mm -hmm. we Especially batch, with the hot weather, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, it definitely sells a lot during the summertime. We batch it out, so we already have it all ready. So all we got to nice. do is put four ounces into our shaker tin right here. So that's two ounces right there. And another two ounces. So delicious cocktails. You're located right here by the Iron Dome off Cherry and Montana Street, right? Uh, yeah. Um, we get a lot of business coming in from the Alamo Dome. Everyone mm -hmm. seems to love to come over after events and hang out with us. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're doing the shaking. <laughs> so this one's a customer favorite, the Paloma. Now, if somebody wants to do a happy hour, you have some specials, right? Uh, yeah, so the happy hour um, is from 5 to 7 normally. Uh, our Paloma is one of the things that are on our happy hour. It's one of our house favorites. And we also uh, have another happy hour that features the painkiller. Uh, that second cocktail that we're going to make here in just a second. It's from 12 to 3. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm top it off with some ice. There we are. I'm going to hand this right off to you. Okay. I'll help garnish. Here we go. There we are. Ta-da! Beautiful, refreshing. All right, I'll give this a try, and then you're going to start on um, what's the next drink? So this is going to be the painkiller. Uh, it's definitely probably within my top three favorite cocktails that we have here. It's a tiki cocktail. Uh, another thing that we batch out, we put some rum, cream of coconut, uh, orange juice, pineapple juice, and then we top it off with a little nutmeg. Ooh, so very tropical. Yeah, definitely a tiki uh, cocktail. Very, mm -hmm. uh, very refreshing, very uh, heavy, I would say, a very dessert drink. Mm -hmm. uh, that definitely features the rum. Got it. So we put five ounces mm -hmm. of the mix into our shaker tin, and we'll shake that before we get the Paloma. And you can, go ahead. <laughs> you can come enjoy these drinks also and enjoy some live music, right? Yeah, so we have a live music series that goes on every Saturday. Uh, we have a lot of bands from a lot of different genres that show up right in the back patio over there and they come up to the window. We usually have these open. They can enjoy some of the drinks while they listen to music. Nice. Awesome. So live music, great cocktails. Just a good time. There we are. I'm just going to put some ice into this. And, and do you have a favorite drink on the menu? I do, yes. This is the next one we're going to be making. Here you are. Here's the stuff for. One. We just got to do one pineapple slice on there, one okay. of our beautiful red cherries. <laughs> there we and go. then we take this little microplane thing mm -hmm. and sprinkle some nutmeg. This gives it an amazing aroma Ooh. that goes very well with the rum taste and all the other tropical flavors that are nice. in there. All right, well, we have about 45 seconds. Let's try to get your last drink in. Again, this one's your favorite. Why is it your favorite? Uh, so it's got a lot of uh, character to it. It's very sweet, and I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, but it also has uh, a little bit of a medicinal taste because uh, there's a lot of cherry flavors in there. So we're Ooh. going to use all equal parts, three-fourths monkey shoulder scotch, some cherry herring, mm -hmm. some Antica formula sweet vermouth, Vermouth. How do you describe the taste of vermouth? Uh, vermouth is a little bitter, um, but it is also uh, very sweet, especially the uh, the sweet vermouth variety. Uh, it's definitely an interesting flavor profile that you won't really get anywhere else. All right. Go with the ice here. Um, now the, the drinks while he shakes that. 
the big chair, nicely with all the food on the menu, and in the second half of the show, we will get a taste of the menu, and then for the ramen, right? And then uh, the, so many different things on the menu. So he's gonna pour this one out, and then I'm gonna get ready to send it back to Fiona and Mike, and then you can grab a drink with me here, and we can say cheers, right? I almost said happy Monday, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Monday. Right. Yeah. It's like a Monday. Right? Cheers, Jen. <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Cheers, hey, you've got a great you. cocktail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Cheers. For more information on the charity bar, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. All right. When SA Live continues, we are becoming bakers. We make fresh baked sourdough conches. Plus, where to spoil your kids this summer with a spa treatment meant just for the little ones. Thank <laughs> you.